Welcome everyone to our chapel chat. This is for Tuesday, August 25th. Deacon Dave, you can read the gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 23, verses 23 through 26. Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You pay tithes of mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier things of the law, judgment and mercy and fidelity. But these you should have done without neglecting the others, blind guides who strain out the gnat and swallow the camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You cleanse the outside of cup and dish, but inside they are full of plunder and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, cleanse first the inside of the cup, so that the outside also may be clean. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So whenever I would come across these passages, I can't help but think about the sort of, uh, I don't know what you call it, but the kind of watered down, uh, warm and fuzzy version of Jesus that some people seem mm-hmm. to believe in. Like Jesus would never say anything mean. He would never right. be harsh or direct. He just loves everybody. And and I mean, yes, Jesus does love everyone. But there were times when he was very direct very and direct. very clear in calling out people's hypocrisy and their sinfulness. And this is one of the examples. And most of the time it was directed at the religious leaders, right? right because right. they had a way of really falling into tremendous patterns of sinfulness and yet had this facade of holiness on the outside. So he begins by calling out the fact that they, yes, you pay tithes of mint and dill and cumin, but you've neglected the weightier things of the law, judgment and mercy and fidelity. Mm. And that's certainly something any one of us could fall into. It's a pretty common practice even today for folks to maybe rarely come to Mass or have any practice of their faith, but just sort of out of a sense of guilt, perhaps, they still give to the church, hoping that maybe that'll be, that'll be enough to kind of get them by. And, and it certainly can't hurt, like that's not a bad thing to do, but that, Jesus is quite clear that that's, that's not enough. It's not just about giving from your, your means to the church and ignoring the rest of, of the faith. What matters more than that is this real conversion of, of life and, and of heart and, mm. and following after him and and all that we do right yeah the um, you know he really was hard on the Pharisees yeah he didn't cut them any slack and no. um, he called it out and so here like you're mentioning about neglecting the weightier things of the law so they were very good the Pharisees and we can be like that too very good at following the rule, the yeah. letter of the law, yeah. um, and think that we're good, yeah. right? And, but Jesus is saying, you're missing the point. Yeah, yeah you need to do all those things, yeah. but it's really the heart. Right. Because if your heart is right, and you're living out the faith, you don't even need a law, yeah. Yeah. because that'll take care of itself. Right. Um, I think St. Augustine had that famous line, he said, love something like this, love God with all your heart and then do as you please. Right, exactly. Because right. if you have that, if your heart is in the right place, then you will do the right thing. Now, some people take that to the extreme, like, well, I just love God, so I don't have to do yeah. it. Like, no. Right, right. <laughs> he, but St. Augustine is speaking about like a radical depth of, of love that something like the saints would have, something that would lead you to give your life for Christ. That's yeah. the kind of love that... Right. Yeah, yeah total dona- donation of self means that all the extraneous things, all the other things are God's yeah. too. Yeah. I give up myself. Yeah. I give everything else. Yeah. Um, I, I really find the part where he says, blind guides who strain out the gnat and swallow the camel. Yeah. So That's I'm not going to be really detailed to make sure no gnats get in. Uh, but there's like this big old camel standing yeah. next to me that I totally ignore. It's kind of like the um, the beam in the eye, right? Right. We got to take that out first. Yeah, the elephant in the room. Yeah. <laughs> I think another sort of interesting note, if I recall correctly, both of those are examples of things that would make them ritually impure if they were to eat them. You're not allowed to eat camel meat, mm. 
-hmm. they weren't allowed to eat any kind of insects. So it's sort of, it's a, a lot of, all of this really is kind of touching on that ritual purity that the Pharisees were so focused on. You know, you're taking time to strain out the gnat out of your food to make sure you're not going to become ritually impure. And then meanwhile, this whole camel is in, is in that and that you kind of miss. Yeah. But but again, like this this could this could absolutely happen. I I I just think of folks that I've encountered who um, I don't know what would be a good example. Like you you get really caught up on maybe some kind of uh, liturgical minutia thing. You know, we're not doing this right or that right in the mass, and it, and it's all this big upset. It, meanwhile, at the same time as that, like there are these pretty serious uh, of things of, of lack of forgiveness going on mm -hmm. or lack of mercy towards others. And, and we can get distracted by some of these l minor things and forget that, that what God is really inviting us into is, is a radical surrender of, of all of those areas of sin in our lives. That's so true. I know for, for me personally, really, really recently, um, I had this disagreement with my neighbor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, love your neighbor. Yeah. This is truly my neighbor. And, um, it was on an issue that made no difference really. Um, but he had his ground, he, I stood my ground. And it wasn't until I really uh, got into reading a particular meditation from Divine Intimacy uh, that really revealed to me and convicted me of how um, I was like speaking into what was true in regard to my rights as a landowner. Yeah but I was totally not loving my neighbor. Yeah. And yeah. so it really, uh, yeah, it really convicted me anyway. And I can't help but think about the fact that um, in this l l latter part of the gospel, he says, you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are full of plunder and self-indulgence. Hmm. As Americans, we have a lot of nice things. We have nice homes, nice cars. And I, like I have those things too. I've got a nice big rectory that I live in that, right. And we can spend so much time trying to be outwardly clean and tidy and looking nice and working out, whatever it may be. And certainly there's a place for that. There's nothing wrong with having a nice clean mm -hmm. house and, and having this good outward appearance and focusing on those things. But all of that is passing away. You know, it'll be here for a time and gone in an instant. Absolutely. And if we're placing more effort in those areas of our life than we are in inner cleanliness, which is holiness and conversion and confession, then there's something deeply out of place with how we're living our life. Mm -hmm. Because what will last for eternity is not our house or our car or our clothes or even this body. Well, our bodies will last for eternity, but... <laughs> But what matters most of all is the state of our soul. Mm -hmm. So we should be investing more time and effort into the cleanliness of our soul, the inside of the cup, rather than just focusing on these externalities. Right. It, this reminds me of Monday's reading, where we're talking about Nathaniel, who was uh, with no duplicity, right? Yeah. Um, so here we have, um, you know, that the inside of the cup has to be as clean as the outside. Yeah. So that just reminds me of that. Yeah. Well, let's close with a prayer then. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, thank you for, these, for this reading, this gospel, and the ways in which you speak to us through your word. Lord, help us to truly listen and heed your words. If there's any area of our life where we are investing more time and effort in, in some worldly thing than in you and in our conversion and, and repentance. Lord, we, re, we repent of that. We ask for your forgiveness for placing our efforts in, in, in the improper order. Help us to always value our relationship with you first and foremost before anything else. And from this proper relationship with you, everything else will properly fall into place. And by relying on you, you will give us the grace to love others as we should, to be faithful to our, to our marriages, to our families, to and faithful in our, all the duties and responsibilities that you give us. So Lord, hear these in all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.